Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be doing a book review on Crypt of the Moon Spider by Nathan Ballingred. Uh, I have never heard of Nathan Ballingred before. I had never heard of this novel or novella, I guess, before until it showed up in my recent Nightworms package, my September 2024 package. Um, and I read it and it's really, really interesting. And I, I feel like I really want to talk about it because it's unlike a lot of things I've read before. I'm going to read the back of the book really quickly. And before I do that, though, this is book one in a series. Um, I do feel like this can work as a standalone novel on its own that I, I don't feel compelled to keep reading the series. I did just do a whole video on why I don't like reading series, but I do not feel like I lost anything by not having like completed the series. Like I, I felt like this book was fine by itself, but let's read the back. A dark and dreamy tale of horror, corruption, and identity. In a cave beneath the dense forest and streams of, on the surface of the moon, a gargantuan spider once lived. Its silk granted its first worshippers immense faculties of power and awe. It's now 1923, and Veronica Brinkley is touching down on the moon for her intake at the Barrowfield Home for Treatment of the Melancholy. A renowned facility, its treatments have been lauded by many. All it takes is a little spider silk in the aming... Dalla, <laughs> maybe a strand or two in the prefrontal cortex, and perhaps an inch in the hippocampus to expunge all the troublesome thoughts and ideas. The patients aren't the only ones with trouble on their minds, and although the spider's been dead for years, its denizens are not. Someone, or something, is up to no good, and Veronica just might be the cause. Okay, so I, I enjoyed this book. Um, the back of the book makes this book sound very, very strange and whimsical and fantastical. And to me, this was more of a kind of sci-fi fantasy style story with some serious horror elements in it. But I have a hard time calling it straight horror. It, it's very fantastical. And normally I wouldn't love that. Um, but I think that the world building in like the 90 pages or so that this book makes up was done very, very well. Um, even though it kind of left me a little bit confused at times. This novel is set in 1923, and for all intents and purposes, we are focusing on a 1923 that has the kind of social norms that the early 1920s did have, yet for some reason we have a mastery of technology in this world, which allows for spaceships, rockets, living on the moon um and a lot of fantastical ideas that i don't think quite made sense to me um being in the setting that they were there there's all these flashbacks to veronica as a child living on a farm in nebraska um and i i just felt it kind of took me out of the story very often to go from this kind of lunar world this lunar fantasy world with this like elevated technology and this 1920s um misogynistic mindset and then just immediately taking us back to like the 1920s that we know in Nebraska like I almost wish that it was just not a place on earth that we recognize there, there are flashbacks to scenes in Boston and New York as well where a lot of the world seems to be as it was back in the 1920s and yet we still have this little massive leap in technology um, and brain surgery um, and spider worship, this weird kind of religious moment as well, um, that I just feel like needed more explanation or needed to be fully disconnected from the 1920s America that we know. Um, I just don't think it quite worked. I would have much rather have had a completely alternate world, an alternate universe, an alternate city, just not basing it upon what has existed because the disconnect between Again, the religious fanaticism, the technology innovations, and the medical innovations just did not work for me. Um, I liked Veronica a lot. I thought she was a really interesting character. I really liked the um, uh, Barrowfield Home for Treatment of the Melancholy. I really liked that name. I thought that was a really, really interesting name to go with. And I like how it was utilized in the story. I like that it felt also like its own character in and of itself, kind of an extension of Veronica's husband as well as an extension of the kind of corrupt doctor and the corrupt, um, I don't know, orderly, I guess is what I would call him. 
Um, I really, really appreciated that. And I liked the insight that we got into some of our characters, getting into the mind of Grub and getting into the mind of Veronica and, and to an extent into the mind of like perhaps Bentley um, in contrast to like knowing very, very little about her husband, knowing very, very little about Dr. Call. I thought it was a really nice way to tell this kind of strange story. Um, this book is creepy. It's very creepy. Uh, there's a lot of very, very, very disturbing scenes. Um, if you are squeamish, this is a book that, well, it's going to make you very, very, very squeamish at times. Um, and it, it was it was gross in a compelling way, I want to say. It never felt gross for gross sake. It was gross with like an element of body horror that I think really, really worked to explain the horrors that Veronica was living through and enduring. Um, and there's something really creepy about the idea of spiders laying eggs in your brain. So I, I did understand, again, how this is considered a horror story, but to me it did still feel very fantastical and there was a lot of world building that again I think was done very very well um but I think needed to be expanded upon and removed from the reality that we know. One of the things that I found really really interesting about this is this reminded me a lot of like one of those like Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities stories. I really felt like this would be like a standalone hour-long tv special and it would do wonders, it would be gross, it would be scary, it would be fantastical, it would give you kind of everything you needed all in this little like compact moment. I do not feel like I need to keep a reading about the legend of the moon spiders and the religions that were created. I think I got the horror that I wanted to from this story. Um, I'm not quite sure if the message is super super deep. It does absolutely kind of hold this criticism of like the way that the early 1900s operated where women were basically property to their husbands and obviously like the 1800s and stuff like that. It is very much a commentary on that as well as a commentary on like our inability to understand mental illness at the time. Um, and I do appreciate that but again it was nothing I haven't seen before, it was nothing mind-boggling, it was nothing exceptionally innovative to me. Um, but it was cool and it was creepy. So this was a four-star read for me because I just don't really have many criticisms of it as a story. Um, and I, again, I found it compelling, I found it creepy, I found it well written, um, but it also just didn't blow me away. There was nothing in the story that I was like, that was fantastic, I need people to read this, like I'm blown away. Um, but it was definitely better than just fine. Like, it is unsettling, it is gross. It does have some really eerie, grotesque body imagery, body horror in here, and I, appreciated that. I do appreciate that. Um, but I wasn't locked in to keep reading about it. I do think that there's no reason for this to continue on as a series either. I think it is a very like cut and dry story has been told kind of moment. Um, and again, this is something that I think would do really, really well translated into film. I think there's a lot of imagery in here that would be really cool to play with. Um, and again, just kind of taking that fantastical element and bolstering it so we once again don't have to connect it to 1920s Earth as we know it. I really think that, that was the one downfall with that, is it just kept taking me out of everything. Um, but I did enjoy it. I would definitely read more from Nathan and Ballingrud. I think he did a very, very good job um, with the story and was able to do a really, like, I really think there's an art to writing succinctly um, and not really leaving us wanting too much more. Uh, but getting your point across and making it scary, giving us character development and doing all of that in under a hundred pages. Um, and I think he did that very, 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 very well. So yeah, this was a four star read for me. I enjoyed it. Um, wouldn't continue reading it as a series unless somebody told me that the series is just mind bogglingly amazing and I just have to read about it. Um, and I liked the lore that was developed and I had fun with it. It was a really, really quick read. I read it in like two sittings. Um, felt unsettled afterwards and I, I was satisfied with the ending so there we go. Anyways that is all that I have for you guys today. As always I try to post every Monday and Thursday sometimes on Saturdays and if you enjoy these videos please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below and I will catch you all in the next one. Mwah.